Now look at what the Target 12 investigators are working on. Just over two years ago, a protest turned riot in Providence in the wake of the killing of George Floyd. Dozens of people were arrested, and some of the criminal cases are still lingering. Target 12 investigator Tim White joining us now in studio. And Tim, tomorrow is sentencing day for yep. the man who admitted to setting fire or taking part in the torching of a Providence police cruiser during the June 2020 riot. There right. have been some twists and turns of this case, too. I can't believe we're still talking about it. You're right, Shannon. There has been a lot of twists and turns. Nicholas Scaglione of Cranston agreed to plead guilty to taking part in the burning of cruiser number 708. And look, you can understand why. There was a mountain of evidence against him. There's video of him dousing what investigators say was an accelerant on the driver's seat of the car. And his lawyer said his own social media accounts gave him up. Scaglione was originally going to be sentenced for violating a federal law against burning a government vehicle. Now, that comes with a mandatory sentence of at least five years in prison. His lawyer negotiated with federal prosecutors, and as a result, Scaglione is pleading guilty to a lesser crime, conspiracy to commit arson, which has no mandatory minimum sentence. Prosecutors are still asking the judge to send him to prison for a little over three and a half years. His lawyer is recommending a sentence of two and a half years. We'll find out tomorrow. And then there is another person, a defendant, I should say, charged in yep. this case, but it's likely that his case might have been stalled out. Yeah, it, it has been, uh, Chelsea. Last summer, federal judge John McConnell determined a Joel Lewis Sierra was not competent to stand trial for his role in setting the cruiser ablaze. By law, Sierra was placed into the custody of the attorney general to receive treatment. He was sent to a federal medical center, which is also a prison in North Carolina for treatment. Sierra was released just last week. So the question is, was the treatment effective enough to allow him to face charges now? I talked to some people in the know, and I'm told the court is waiting for the report on the results of that treatment. So he could still stay in trial. We'll find out. Tim, going back to that night, and a lot of us, I'm sure, remember it pretty vividly yes. <laughs> uh, a little more than two years ago. A lot of people remember the images of, of rioters breaking into the Providence Place yep. Mall. The following day, you were in district court covering the arraignments of 65 people who were arrested that night. But the two people we're talking about here were not among them. Why is this such a different investigation? It's a good question, Shannon. As you point out, every one of the 65 people arrested were taken into custody that night. Scaglione and Sierra were arrested later as part of an FBI investigation. Agents reviewed video from social media and news coverage. And a big part of that is because police stepped back and let them torch the cruiser. Commissioner Stephen Perry was among police officials who made the call, and I asked him about that in an interview a year after the riots. They just had greater numbers than we had for us to protect that patrol vehicle, and it wasn't worth somebody getting hurt over. And that was a tough decision, but it was made on the ground, let the car go. And I have to tell you both, uh, talking to a lot of police officers, that was not a popular decision among many of the officers who were there that night. And it was just um, outside the Providence Place Mall recently. And you can still see the charred uh, pavement, you know, more than two years later from that cruiser fire. Wow. Wow. Well, sentencing for Scaglion is tomorrow at 11 a.m. at federal court. Target 12 investigator Tim White, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.